Good day, here are the headlines from the Philippine News Agency. President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. expressed his support to Senator Francis Chiz Escudero as the new Senate President, replacing Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri. In a statement posted on social media, Marcos acknowledged Escudero's track record and expertise in the legislative. He is also confident that under Escudero's leadership, the Senate would continue prioritizing measures that promote the administration's agenda for positive transformation. Escudero was elected Senate President following Zubiri's resignation as leader of the upper chamber. Meanwhile, Senate President Pro Tempore Loren Legarda, Majority Leader Joel Villanueva and Senators Nancy Binay, Sani Angara, and J.V. Ejercito also stepped down from their positions as committee heads. Escudera appointed Senator Jingoy Estrada as Senate President Pro Tempore, Senator Francis Tolentino as Committee on Rules Chairperson and Majority Floor Leader, and Senator Alan Peter Caetano as Chair of the Committee on Accounts. In a press conference after this session, Escudero said the success of any Senate leadership lies on the trust and confidence of the majority of Senators. President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. reiterated the government's commitment to create a favorable business environment in the Philippines and enhance the country's investor-friendly laws. Speaking in today's Indo-Pacific Business Forum in Taguig City, the chief executive cited reforms such as the corporate recovery and tax incentives for enterprises or CREATE Act, the Ease of Doing Business Act, the Green Lanes for Strategic Investments Executive Order. He said the CREATE MORE Act is a big step forward for the country as it expands and refines the incentives provided by the CREATE Act making the country even more attractive for investments. In May 2023, both Presidents Marcos and Joe Biden agreed to co-host the Indo-Pacific Business Forum, which is a premier commercial event in the Indo-Pacific region for the United States. President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. assured the public of the government's readiness to address the impact of the looming La Nina phenomenon. In an interview during the distribution of 5,000 land titles to agrarian reform beneficiaries in Eastern Visayas, Marcos said the government will address La Nina's challenges through the construction of long-term flood control projects. This following concerns over the depleted calamity fans of local government units following their response to the extended drought. Marcos said there is no need for any additional action since the government is taking possible measures to prepare for the upcoming La Nina, which is forecast to hit the country in the later part of the year. Marcos was in Tacloban City to fulfill his promise of giving lands to farmers. Kareti naman kami, but of course, on the long, the long term, ang, ang talagang solusyon dyan is yung flood control. Ha? Ayusin natin yung flood control, gagawin natin irrigation, mag-iipon tayo ng tubig para pagka na naabuta na naman tayo ng uh, tagtuyot, kagaya ngayon, ay meron tayong pagkukuha ng tubig. President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. condoled with the government and the people of Iran following the death of President Ebrahim Raisi in a helicopter crash on Monday. In a statement on social media, Marcos also offered condolences to the families of Raisi as well as Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian and six other passengers and crew who died in the incident. He said the Filipinos stand with the Iranian people and pray for them in this difficult time. Raisi and his delegation were returning from a dam inauguration ceremony in the Iran-Azerbaijan border when their helicopter crashed due to bad weather conditions. The Iranian president and the others were found dead after hours-long search operation. The 63-year-old Raisi was seen as a likely successor to Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei before his demise. Vice President Mohammad Mokber now sits as acting president while the country prepares for presidential elections set for June 28. The Commission on Elections has breached its 
target of 3 million voter registrants for the 2025 midterm polls. Comelec Chair George Garcia said the poll body processed a total of 3,020,999 applications as of Monday. Over 1.5 million of the newly applied voters were female, while over 1.4 million were male. Calabarzon had the biggest number of processed applications at over 541,000, followed by the National Capital Region with over 440,000 and Central Luzon with over 349,000. Meanwhile, at least 4.2 million voters are set to be deactivated for failing to vote for two consecutive elections. Garcia said the Comelec is expecting around 68 million registered voters to participate in next year's elections. The voters' registration will continue until September 30. Households in Luzon and the Visayas are advised to prepare for possible brownouts today as both areas are placed under yellow alert. In an advisory, the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines made separate announcements on the yellow alert status. The Luzon grid will be on yellow alert from 1 to 4 in the afternoon and from 7 to 10 in the evening. This is due to six of its power plants running on the rated capacities while at least 18 are on forced outage. Meanwhile, the Visayas grid will be on yellow alert from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. and from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. This, as 16 of its power plants are on forced outage, while 5 are running on the rated capacities. A yellow alert means that transmission grid does not have enough power to serve its needs. And that's the latest and the biggest stories on the PNA headlines. For more news updates, please visit our website, pna.gov.ph, or our Facebook and X account, Philippine News Agency. The PNA headlines is also streamed via the Servicio Facebook page. You may also watch the PNA headlines through the Philippine News Agency's YouTube account via the News and Information Bureau website, nib.gov.ph, under PNA News or on the Facebook page of the Presidential Communications Office or PCO. I am Marita Moa and this is the PNA Headlines, bringing stories that unite the nation.